We previously discussed isomorphisms between vector spaces, link in the description to that video. We saw how if two vector spaces are isomorphic, their algebraic structures are exactly the same, and so the differences between them are purely notational, the names of the vectors and all that. But we didn't talk about geometric structure, which is induced by an inner product. And so that begs the question, can we find inner product spaces that appear different, but in fact are precisely the same, just with different names? And indeed we can, and in this video we'll discuss isomorphisms between inner product spaces, which preserve the geometric structure which is induced by the inner product. Now remember, we're talking about geometric structure here because angles and distances are all defined in terms of inner products. Link in the description to my lesson on on inner product spaces if you need to review that. So since the geometric structure comes from the inner product, in order to preserve the geometric structure, an isomorphism between inner product spaces will have to preserve the inner product. So this definition hopefully isn't too much of a surprise. Let V and W be inner product spaces. If T is a linear transformation from V to W that is one to one, onto, and preserves inner products, then T is what we call an inner product space isomorphism. It is an isomorphism from the inner product space V to the inner product space W. Let's make sure we know what all this stuff in the definition means. One to one means it preserves distinctness, so it maps distinct vectors in V to distinct vectors in W. On to means that every vector in W is the image of at least one vector in V. And all of this about preserving the inner products, well this just says the inner product of the images of two vectors in the codomain has to equal the inner product of those same vectors in the domain. So we've got an inner product of two vectors in the domain. Once we transform them through the transformation T, the inner product of those images can't be changed. It has to be exactly the same. And so by preserving all of these inner products, the transformation will preserve all of the geometric structure. If T is an inner product space isomorphism, its inverse is as well. And so rather than saying just that V is isomorphic to W, we may just say that V and W you are isomorphic, because if there's an isomorphism from one to the other, you could take the inverse to go the other direction. Just as with vector spaces, each n-dimensional inner product space is also isomorphic to Euclidean n-space. I'll leave a link in the description to a video where we prove that, but this means that Rn, just as with vector spaces, Rn is a perfect model for every n-dimensional inner product space. This theorem tells us exactly Exactly what that isomorphism would be from a given inner product space to Rn. If S is an ordered orthonormal basis for a real n-dimensional inner product space V, then the coordinate map that takes each vector u and sends it to its coordinate vector relative to that orthonormal basis S, this is an inner product space isomorphism between V and Rn with the Euclidean inner product. We saw a similar theorem with vector space isomorphisms, but the basis just had to be ordered. But now that we're talking about inner product space isomorphisms, this basis also needs to be orthonormal for this coordinate map relative to that basis to be an inner product space isomorphism. Once more, what this isomorphism T does is it takes a vector u from that inner product space V and it maps it into its coordinate vector relative to the orthonormal basis S. Its coordinate vector, of course, is going to be an n-tuple that exists in Rn. Now let's see an example of an inner product space isomorphism partly using that theorem we just saw. The vector space of polynomials up to degree n minus 1 is isomorphic to Euclidean n space, and an isomorphism between them is seen here. This is exactly the type of isomorphism we just described, in fact. So what it does is it takes an arbitrary polynomial from the space, and it maps it to the ordered n-tuple that just consists of the coefficients of the polynomial, a0, a1, a2, and so on, all the way up through a n minus 1. What you should notice here is this, the image of the polynomial under the transformation, is the coordinate vector of the polynomial, 
with respect to the standard basis for the polynomial space. The standard basis for this polynomial space is just this set here, consisting of 1, x, x squared, x cubed, and so on, up to x to the n minus 1. And so this transformation is indeed just taking us to the coordinate vector relative to that standard basis. But this is a standard basis that we've discussed previously at great length. We've previously seen that it is orthonormal. All of the vectors in this basis have a norm of 1, and they're all orthogonal to each other. So this is an orthonormal basis, and hence we can apply the theorem we just saw to conclude that this transformation T is in fact an isomorphism between the inner product spaces. Again, that's because what T does is it takes a vector from the inner product space of polynomials up to degree n minus one, and it just maps it to the coordinate vector relative to an orthonormal basis. It happens to be the standard basis, but what's important for the theorem is that it is an orthonormal basis. Because of that, we can conclude it is an inner product space isomorphism, and these inner product spaces are isomorphic. Their algebraic and geometric structures are exactly the same. The differences between them are purely notational. Another example that feels pretty intuitively obvious is the isomorphism between Mn and Rn. Mn here we're saying is the vector space of real n by 1 column matrices. So let's consider the standard inner products on these spaces. On Rn, the standard inner product is the dot product, and on Mn, the standard inner product of two matrices is the trace of the transpose of one times the other. We've gone over this previously. It turns out that this inner product on the matrix space is actually just the sum of the products of the corresponding entries of the matrices, but this is the formula that describes that. So the inner product of a matrix U with a matrix V, it is the trace of U transpose times v, but if you do that out, the details show that it is in fact just the sum of the products of the corresponding entries of u and v. All right, so here's our transformation from mn to rn. It takes a column matrix from mn and just maps it to the corresponding n-tuple that just contains the entries of the matrix going from top to bottom. This transformation is indeed an inner product space isomorphism. It should be straightforward if you would like to verify that it's a linear transformation, that it's one to one, and that it's onto. But clearly it also preserves inner products, because if we take the inner product of one matrix with another, what we're going to get, like we said, is just the sum of the products of the corresponding entries. But sum of the products of the corresponding entries is exactly how dot products in Rn work. So indeed, the inner product of this matrix with some other matrix would be exactly the same as the inner product of this matrix with the image of that other matrix under this transformation. Indeed, it's not surprising that the difference between these spaces is just in notation. One space uses matrix notation, and the other one uses parentheses, the sequence or n-tuple notation. Note also in the previous example, we applied our theorem to conclude that T was an isomorphism between the spaces, but we also could have just considered how the inner products work to see that it does preserve inner products. If P and Q are just two arbitrary polynomials from the polynomial space, their inner product in that space is just the sum of the products of their corresponding coefficients. But that's exactly what the Euclidean inner product would be if we took the inner product of their images under the transformation, because the transformation just sends each polynomial to the n-tuple consisting of its coefficients. And so if you took the inner product of those, Again, you would just be multiplying the corresponding coefficients together and adding them. So that's a little bit about isomorphic inner product spaces. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in this course. Thanks for watching. Audio.